What's up guys, welcome back to my Mario Kart review series for Super Mario Kart's 30th anniversary. Today I'm going to dive into Mario Kart Double Dash, the fourth game in the series. And that's it for the intro, so let's get right into it. Ah yes, the game where one exclamation mark wasn't enough emphasis for the title. Anyways, this is when Mario Kart really started to get good. The past titles weren't bad per se, they were actually great, however this game was definitely a step up and continued to step up as time went on. This game was the real predecessor of Mario Kart 64. Sorry Super Circuit, but I like to think of you as a spin-off due to the limitations of the GBA. Still love you though. Something that I've noticed about Mario Kart Double Dash is a lot of the things that made this game great have been ditched somewhere down the line or just haven't returned at all. You will see later in the video. Obviously the name gives away the fact that there are two racers per cart, which is honestly a really fun new gimmick. It not only allows more strategy, but you can also co-op with another player and have them be the second racer. A lot of people agree it should be a new mode for the next Mario Kart game. The second thing that this game was known for was the special items that are exclusive to each character, but we will get back to that in a second. The character roster for this game is incredible. We have the returning characters from Super Circuit and Koopa Troopa is back for Super Mario Kart, and then we have a whopping 11 new characters which are Daisy, Birdo, Baby Mario, Baby Luigi, Toadette, Paratroopa, Diddy Kong, Bowser Jr., Waluigi, Petey Piranha, and King Boo. Something that doesn't get talked about enough is the fact that we have different carts to choose from instead of the standard cart now. I didn't unlock all of them, but there are some really cool ones to choose from. Back to items, each character has an exclusive special item that they can pull, obviously depending on their placement, which adds strategy to picking characters. And unlike Super Mario Kart, you actually get to use them this time. Mario and Luigi have fireballs, which later spark the fire flower power, up. Peach and Daisy have these weird hearts which not only make you invincible to items, but if you hit an item or get hit by an item, it is yours now and you can actually use it. Yoshi and Birdo have this weird egg power up that is basically a red shell that can break into three random items that can literally be anything that isn't a special item, even a star. Baby Mario and Baby Luigi have a chain chomp which is a low placement item that unleashes a freaking chain chomp with you attached to it. Toad and Toadette have the golden mushroom which is now off the table for other players, only they can get it now. The Koopas have triple red shells which are now also off the table. Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong have a giant banana that splits into three when something hits it. Bowser and Bowser Jr. have a giant green shell which looks like a Bowser shell. By the way, all you Waluigi players would love this power up. You get on a straightaway, backspam it like a red shell, and then hit everyone. And Wario and Waluigi have bomb bombs which are actually introduced for the first time in this game. Petey Piranha and King Boo have access to all the special power ups, so that's cool, I guess. You can also mix and match the characters you choose. You don't have to pick their partners. It also allows you to get different items too, so if you pick two Toadette and Baby Mario, for example, you could pull both a Golden Mushroom or a Chain Chomp. Similar to the double character gimmick, character exclusive items should make a return in the next Mario Kart as well. Anyways, let's get into the tracks. This game might just have the most balanced track selection as well as the best soundtrack. It did not miss in any way, shape, or form here. The game starts off with Luigi Circuit, which is a 10 out of 10 introduction. Like seriously, you want to show the new player Double Dash? Show them this track where you have to backtrack through all the items on the ground, and by lap 3 it's basically an obstacle course. Peach Beach is a really good sunshine referencing track with its cataquacks and piantas in the background. Baby Park is one of the best tracks of all time with its chaotic design and the music giving you 7 laps of chaotic fun even though it's just an oval. Dry Dry Desert is decent with a cool piranha pit that reminds me of the Sarlacc from Star Wars. Mushroom Bridge is a really great traffic track with a super hard shortcut that doesn't really save any time and it's incredible music. Mario Circuit is the worst track in the game but I still love the music and its chain chomp. Daisy Cruiser is a freaking cruise ship. Waluigi Stadium is a really fun track full of jumps through rings of fire. It literally feels like Mario Kart's take on a motocross stadium. No, I changed my mind. Sherbet Land is the worst in the game. Those freezies are a nightmare. Mushroom City is a better mushroom bridge with its cool night theme. Yoshi Circuit is really creative, being shaped like a Yoshi. And DK Mountain is a really great track, like who wouldn't enjoy it? When you unlock the Special Cup, you have access to Wario Coliseum, which is a really difficult track with a lot of speed boosts and many opportunities to fall off. Dino Dino Jungle, which is really cool, I mean there's a freaking dinosaur, like what more can I say? Bowser's Castle captures the theme perfectly and is pretty fun. And then the Rainbow Road is amazing, of course. Great music and super difficult as it should be. However, it's got this turn that I don't think a single soul in this universe can consistently pull off like geez. All of these tracks have their own charm, great music, and they also have a few cool shortcuts around the track. Moving on to mechanics, the drifting in this game is much different than the others, which I honestly kind of like. You have to rock the joystick more times, but it's quicker and feels more satisfying. Something that has a major effect on drifting is the sensitivity, which I don't really like. It's way too sensitive for my liking. I'll just go a bit to the right to straighten myself out, and I'm off the track or into the off-road 
railroad every time. It requires a lot of skill to get down. For items, you can now hold two at once by switching characters between item boxes or grab a double box. And unlike Mario Kart 8 Deluxe where you can't use that bullet bill in the second slot because you have a piranha plant activated, you can actually switch the items to use each item wherever you want to. Something that also isn't talked about often is the red shells. In this game they lock on and avoid walls much better than in others. Also, when avoiding them, you can't hold an item behind you. You have to time when to throw your item backwards at it, or you can make a sudden swerve to dodge it. It's a really unique style, but I think it's cool. Another thing about this game is that it started the three-game trend of you lose your items for everything. I'll talk about it more for DS, but I'm not the biggest fan of losing my item whenever someone hits me. It just makes the game more frustrating, in my opinion. But then again, the game is hard, and that adds to the amount of strategy necessary to be good at it. The last thing that infuriates me about this game is how this game is literally rigged. Every single cup the game picks one racer and makes them the one who has to win every time. The other AI will literally hold their fire for them, Mario Kart you whenever possible, and they will literally either hit the brakes for them or intentionally hit themselves. Like what? At that point the goal becomes to screw the other racer over instead of winning yourself. It's really messed up. Let's talk about unlockables. This game takes it to a whole new level. Once you beat 150cc, you unlock the All Cup Tour, which is a marathon of all the tracks. I totally didn't make it to Rainbow Road and then get Mario Kart to lose my first place overall and had to spend another hour doing it again. No, totally not. Anyways, getting gold on the All Cup Tour for 150cc unlocks Mirror Mode, which you need to get first on the Star Cup to unlock PD Piranha and King Boo, just so you can have all the characters. Oh, by the way, Toad and Toadette are also unlockable if you get first on the special cup on 100cc, which is weird. I don't know why this is a thing, but okay. It's really fun to have something to play the game for, but when you just want to have the stuff to play with friends, it's not a fun grind. Battle Mode now also has a few new modes, which are Shine Thief and Bomb on Blast. These later returned in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and are actually really cool. In terms of maps, we have Cookie Land, Block City, GameCube, Pipe Plaza, Luigi's Mansion, and Tilta Kart, which are all pretty decent. And that is Mario Kart Double Dash. It's a really great Mario Kart game, probably top 3 of all time for me. It's just so unique in a good way, and aspects of it need to make a return. It also doesn't look bad for almost being 20 years old, sheesh. It also really shines in multiplayer. Next time on the series, I will be reviewing Mario Kart DS, the one who dared to follow this one up. I hope you all consider subscribing if you enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next one. Have a good one.